on? Oh, God. Ah, it's been a while since I've done this. How does this stuff work? Okay, the gain, um, volume. Oh, I am recording. Hello? Wow. <laughs> Welcome back to Man Eaters, the only true crime podcast on the internet where all the killers are real animals. My name is James, and if you are thinking, hey, it's been a while since I've heard this goofy guy's voice, uh, you're not wrong. Um, this, there hasn't been a new episode released for like, pretty much exactly a month, and I do apologize. A um, little bit of a life update. I was very, very sick a couple weeks ago. I, like, I had a flu, and then I got a little better, and then I got re-sick. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but I got sick and then I got re-sick. Uh, and then, yeah, for the last two weeks, I've been traveling um, the UK and uh, and Paris, um, which was really, really exciting. I did plan to have, like, um, episodes ready to release for you guys while I was away, but that just didn't happen, okay? I'm sorry. Sometimes shit doesn't pan out. You're going to sit there? You're going to sit there like that and give me gruff? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a little agitated because I'm still jet lagged. I've never flown uh, international before. I've never really been on a long flight. I've never experienced jet lag. Um, I, I thought that I'd be able to handle jet lag because, like, I'm really tough. Um, but no, it turns out I'm a massive um, pussy. I can't handle it. I haven't slept properly for about a week. I'm running on about five hours of sleep uh, over the last three days. But nonetheless, I wanted to sit down and record an episode because it's been too long. I've been missing it, I've been missing you, and uh, so yeah, we're back with a really exciting episode. This one by popular demand, I guess, if you can call one person popular demand. Um, The story today is Two-Toed Tom, the terror of the South, an alligator who uh, stalked people for many years, caused many deaths, allegedly, Um, and we're going to talk about another uh, very sad, more modern uh, alligator attack as well today in this episode. I want to give a shout out to the person that suggested this named Tristan. Uh, they sent an email ages ago with uh, with a couple suggestions for episodes. Tuto Tom was a really exciting one once I started, you know, doing a little bit of research. So been waiting for a while to do this episode. Very keen to present it to you. Uh, but first, before I jump into anything, I learned a couple interesting animal facts while I was away, and I wanted to share one with you. And if you're on the Instagram, the Man Eaters Instagram, um, you might have already seen this in my story. Um, I was at uh, the Tower of London, which is essentially, um, it's where they keep the crown jewels, but it's also a, a museum to all the old, like, um, memorabilia for London in, in the medieval times. It's basically just a big castle with a lot of medieval stuff in it. Uh, there's like a, a little stump where they would execute people, they'd chop off their heads, uh, a bunch of torture devices, which is really cool. They also had all these statues of animals just around the place, and I was like, what's the what's the deal with that? There were some lions at the front, there were, there were baboons, there was an elephant behind like a little gate, um, and there was a polar bear, and I, I was asking around, like, Why, what, what's with this? Um, and they're to <laughs> basically commemorate all the animals um, that they had um, you know, at the tower of, for over, over all the years. It basically boils down to rich people were really bored back in the olden days, and like their hobby was to torture animals. So, um, for an example, they, they had a polar bear um, uh, at the Tower of London hundreds and hundreds of years ago. How you get a polar bear like there in that age, like I don't really get. Like, today, it makes sense. You tranquilize it, you put it on a plane or a boat, and they get here. But back then, I don't really... I don't know if they had tranquilizer. I think maybe they just got it really really drunk on, like, whiskey or scotch or something and and rode it over. But, yeah, they had a polar bear that lived at the Tower of London, and they would actually let the polar bear swim in the Thames, which is right next door. They would put it on a big, thick rope around its neck and... Um, tie it to like part of the pier and the polar bear would swim in the Thames when it got too hot um, and I'm just thinking like how weird would it be to be a um, you know like a peasant or, or whatever just rowing down the Thames and you see a fucking polar bear coming at you um, you'd think yeah I, I'm <laughs> yeah I've got rabies I've got syphilis I'm going mad um, that's my little animal fact for you today before we jump into the story so I hope you appreciated that if you do drop a like and uh, all that bullshit for me. And if you didn't, uh, I guess actively avoid this podcast from now on. Okay, that's enough waffling on. Uh, we are talking today about Two Toad Tom, the terror of the South. Uh, heads up, by the way, later in this story, there is um, a story. It's like a trigger warning I think I'm going to do uh, because there is the, the death of a child involved in one of these stories. Actually, in both of these stories, but one of them is more recent than others. So uh, sit back. Here we go. It is Two Toad Tom time. 
If there's one animal from the southeast of the United States and Mexico that stokes fears in people, it's the alligator. From the moment humans populated the North American continent, we've been at odds with these ferocious beasts who, even though they are generally solitary animals, have been responsible for the deaths of hundreds of men, women, and children throughout the years. Alligators are huge reptiles belonging to the family Alligatoridae and the genus Alligator of the Crocodilia order. The American alligator and the Chinese alligator are the only two species still living. Several extinct alligator species are also known through fossilized remains. About 37 million years ago, during the Oligocene period, alligators first appeared. Early Spanish explorers and settlers in Florida called it El Agato, the Spanish word for the lizard. The name alligator is likely an anglicized version of this term. Alligata and alligato were two later English forms of the same name. The American alligator is a relatively large member of the crocodilian family. Only the black caiman may be larger than it in terms of average size among the alligator species. Size, age, health, season, and the availability of food resources all have a significant impact on weight. American alligators from the northern end of their range, such as southeastern Arkansas, Alabama, and north North Carolina, tend to attain lesser sizes, similar to many other reptiles that wander widely into temperate zones. When compared to other crocodilians of the same length, large adult American alligators tend to be more robust and heavy. For instance, captive males measuring 3 to 4 meters were found to weigh 200 to 350 kilograms. Although, due to the absence of hunting activities and other pressures, captive animals may live to be heavier than wild specimens. The idea that crocodilians like the American alligator exhibit indeterminate growth, which means the animal keeps growing throughout its life, is one that is frequently expressed in reptilian lit literature. But the majority of these assertions are based on presumptions and studies of juvenile and young adult crocodilians. There is evidence to support patterns of determinant growth according to the lengthy mark recapture research conducted at the Tom Yorkie Wildlife Center in South Carolina. The research enabled the observation of life histories, revealing that certain American alligators may live to be over 70 years of age. Along with several other increasing investigations, this study extends the evidence of growth rates and points towards more recently endorsed. Although the American alligator can kill people, deadly assaults are hardly common nowadays. Attacks by mistake are always a possibility, especially in or near waters that are murky, such as swamps and mangroves. American alligators are frequently less hostile to people than larger crocodile species, of course the Australian saltwater and the African Nile crocodiles being a couple of the very aggressive species we know about. However, alligators may occasionally prey on people. Due to the alligator's powerful bite and potential for infection, alligator bites result in significant injuries. An American alligator bite can still cause a fatal illness even after medical attention is received. Incidents involving human interaction with American alligators and their habitats are unavoidable when human populations rise, when people construct homes in low-lying areas, or if they fish and hunt too close to bodies of water. 257 reported attacks on humans have occurred since 1948 in Florida alone, and there have been documented five incidents annually, with an estimated 23 of these incidents in history ending in fatalities. Between 2001 and 2007, American alligators claimed the lives of 12 people, compared to just 9 fat fatal assaults during the 1970s through to the 1990s. Three Florid Floridians were killed by American alligators in less than a week in May in 2006. Since 1970, American alligator attacks have resulted in at least 28 fatalities throughout the country. Today, we are talking about one of the most legendary of all man-eating alligators, Two-Toed Tom. Legend has it that Two-Toed Tom was an alligator that lived in swamps in the southeast. The beast allegedly caused havoc in the 1900s, leaving trails of mangled corpses in its wake. Two-Toed Tom was a monstrous, monstrous alligator that had been compared to a demon because of its size, glowing red eyes, and because it had two toes that had been amputated during prior attempts in its life, likely through a steel trap. In the 1920s, rumors about a murderous aquatic beast in Alabama started to spread. University of Alabama professor Carl Karma was one of the first to put these stories in writing. Eventually, he wrote down these rumors while researching for his travelogue in the area. 
The beast, according to locals, was four and a half meters long and had been stalking the village for decades. Alligators were frequent in the area, but this one was acting very differently from other alligators in that it was aggressively seeking and eating people and animals. Some have even claimed that Tuto Tom was more than just an alligator, claiming it had red flashing eyes and was incredibly strong, capable of tearing a horse to pieces with just a, sting a single thrash of its jaws. As rumors began to circulate, the belief that the alligator was some kind of demon sent from hell became widespread. Tuto Tom not only killed livestock and people, but in many rather than sensationalized reports, was also alleged to rape women who were alone by themselves in the swamps. Civilians in the area would become convinced that the alligator was indeed evil. The telltale trail it would leave in the mud became all the proof the people would need to confirm the existence of a serial killer gator. The trail looked like any other left by a gator, albeit much larger, except for one small detail. The footprint of the animal's front left foot had only two toes. According to the legend, locals made the decision to take matters into their own hands and set out to kill the beast. The alligator had a large bounty placed on it, but it proved nearly impossible to kill because it would simply shrug off anything that was thrown at it. Two-toed Tom must have been quite brilliant because he managed to elude his would-be kidnappers at every opportunity. The beast would continue to cause trouble for another 20 years. Pap Hines, a farmer who had purchased a 40-acre property, provided what is arguably the most provided what is arguably the most terrible report. Pap found that one of his mules had been torn apart, traces of two-toed footprints and blood leading to a pond, despite being informed that the legends surrounding this fabled alligator were simply myths. Pap resolved to finally kill the monster after realizing two-toed Tom must have been living on his property. With the assistance of his sons, Pap loaded 15 syrup buckets with dynamite sticks and started throwing them into the pond. The buckets of explosives had completely ruined the pond, making it appear that nothing could possibly have survived in there. Pat became satisfied that the monster must be dead until later that day they heard screams coming from another lake on the property. The party came face to face with the gruesome remains of Heinz's 12 year old granddaughter who had ventured outside to investigate a noise. Heinz would continue his feud with this savage alligator until he finally died, bitter and unfulfilled, believing that Tuto Tom had most likely known about their intentions and hunted down his granddaughter in revenge. Some sources indicate that Two-Toed Tom lived and left Alabama, settling in the Sand Hammock Lake near Etso and Noma in Florida. According to a legend-focused chapter in the book Homesteading by E.W. Carswell, the monster bellowed an answer to a whistle at the Alabama-Florida Lumber Company mill near Noma and continued to devour animals. A bunch of local youths attempted to kill the creature once more, but their 22 caliber rifle and shotgun attacks proved unsuccessful. In 1972, an article in, the an article in the Penascotta News Journal reported that the creature's footprints had been found in Bonyan Bay, near the community of Redhead in Florida. Despite the numerous mentions of Two-Toed Tom in literature, it's impossible to know exactly how many people and animals were killed by him, or if he ever really existed at all. Locals in the states of Florida and Alabama are convinced of his existence and live wondering when the next monster will emerge from the murky waters of the south. I'm going to take this opportunity now to talk about another very infamous alligator attack that happened in more recent times. Again, uh, content warning, this story does involve the death of a very small child, so if you don't want to hear about that, uh, you can skip to the end. Six years ago, Orlando, Florida was still recovering from a weekend of terror that included the 49-person fatal mass shooting at the Pulse nightclub, which took place the night after singer Christina Grimmie was shot dead at her concert. Then, on Tuesday, June 14th, tragedy struck Florida once more, when a two-year-old boy named Lane Thomas Graves was taken by an alligator while playing on the beach at Walt Disney World's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa and dragged into the Seven Seas Lagoon. Matt Graves tried to save his son, Lane, but the gator dragged him into the lagoon where he drowned. Along with Lane's mother, Melissa, and his four-year-old sister, Ella, numerous other visitors also saw the attack on June 14, 2016. The family had traveled from Nebraska to enjoy a holiday at Disney. It took 16 hours before Lane's body was finally found and recovered. 
The youngster drowned and died as a result of catastrophic neck injuries, according to a medical examiner's findings. In a statement given to the media following the attack, Matt Graves said, Melissa and I are broken. We will always find it difficult to understand why this happened to our precious baby Lane. The agony gets deeper every day, but we sincerely appreciate the outpouring of sympathy and kind words we receive from all around the world. Since the tragedy, Disney has constructed rock walls and fences along all of its beachside resorts and plastered warning signs about alligators and snakes in the lagoon. The Lane Thomas Foundation, a non-profit organization that assists families of children who require life-saving organ transplants, was founded by the Graves family as a result of their grief. According to a statement on the foundation's website, the, the foundation was named Lane Thomas because if Lane was ever asked what his name was, he would answer, I'm Lane Thomas, I'm too. The greatest way to carry on the legacy of Lane Thomas left on this earth was to establish the Lane Thomas Foundation. Lane was a bright, lively, and loving child who sincerely cared for his family. Since Lane Graves' death, Disney has removed over 200 alligators from their parks in Florida. In keeping with our strong commitment to safety, we continue to reinforce procedures related to the reporting sightings and interactions with wildlife, and we work closely with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission to remove or relocate certain wildlife from our property in accordance with state regulations, a Walt Disney World spokesperson said. The government gives a permit to state-employed alligator trappers when an alligator is at least four feet long and is determined to be a threat to humans, animals, or property. Under the initiative, about 7,700 alligators have been captured around the state in 2019. Most of these alligators are put to death, while some reptiles are sold alive to alligator farms, animal exhibitions, or zoos. Because alligators frequently attempt to return to the area in which they've been captured, and because isolated areas typically have healthy alligator populations, FWC does not relocate nuisance alligators. The FWC claims that 1.3 million alligators that live in Florida do not significantly change as a result of the removal of obtrusive alligators. The FWC pays trappers a stipend of $30 for each alligator they catch, even those that work on Disney's property. To gain more money, many people sell the alligators meat and hide. The FWC has given Walt Disney World special permits that enable the business to work directly with a trapper to get rid of invasive alligators. The number and dimensions of the alligators captured must afterward be re reported to the FWC. Throughout April 2023, two designated trappers are authorized to remove up to 500 alligators under Disney's targeted harvest area permits, which were first given out in 2009. Oh boy. Ah, uh, so two very different stories there. One from the beginning of the uh, 1900s and one from the beginnings of the 2100s. Uh, sorry, the, the 2100s? Not the 2100s, the 2000s. Oh, God. Anyway, um, yeah, so Two Toad Tom, obviously a story we've been wanting to cover for a while. It's more of a, a cryptid. It's, a, it's one of these semi cryptids we've been, um, you know, discussing recently. Uh, and I'm going to do a little bit of announcement about that kind of content at the end of the episode. So if you're interested, stay tuned for that. Um, and of course, yeah, Lane, Lane Thomas Graves, who was killed by an alligator uh, about six years ago. Um, I didn't realize it was the same weekend as the uh, the Pulse uh, nightclub shooting. And of course, that, that singer that was murdered at her own concert. That, that was a bad weekend. Jesus Christ, what a bad week to be in Florida. To be in Orlando, it wasn't just Florida, it was Orlando, it was the one city. Can you imagine if your city had that much um, death and misery going on in a single span of like four or five days? Oh, insane. Very sad. Uh, yes, also, if you want to um, donate to the Lane Thomas Foundation, I believe the foundation is still active and operational. I'm going to leave a, uh, a link to that in the, uh, in the caption of this episode, so uh, you can absolutely go check that out, and that would be much appreciated, I'm sure. Um, yeah, great. Okay, so we're going to move on now to our Scratch of the Day. Um, of course, the Scratch of the Day, one of my favorite segments of the show, guys. Uh, scratch of the Day uh, is when I look in the news and find animal attack stories that have happened recently, and we just talk about them. We, we read the report and we talk about them. The first Scratch of the Day story, you've likely actually heard already. It, it's made the news. It's been all over BuzzFeed and all over Reddit. Um, an elephant uh, trampled a woman to death, uh, and you would think that would be enough to be 
big story, but that's actually not the most exciting or interesting part. This elephant then reportedly returned to that woman's funeral and trampled her again after killing her. So we're going to read that story now. This is from, uh, I can't remember the, the journalist. Oh, it's from Snopes. Okay. So all credit to Snopes for this story. The headline is elephant reportedly returns to woman's funeral after trampling her to death. An Indian woman was reportedly trampled to death by an elephant said to have returned to her funeral later that same day, terrorized a village, and then attacked her corpse while villagers were performing her last rites. News of the incident spread online by both local and international news publications, as well as social media users, though the exact details of the incident are conflicting. We'll break down exactly what we found regarding the event, with the disclaimer that as of this publication, the Snopes newsroom has yet to find an official statement from law enforcement or a government agency verifying the incident. As of writing this on June 20th, 2022, here is what we know. An elderly woman, somewhere between the age of 60 and 70 years of age, was reportedly killed in mid-June 2022 by an elephant in the Indian state of Odisha. Mayu Mumba was said to have been collecting water in the Rapai village outside the Dalma Wildlife Sanctuary. By email, we can they contacted the district government Purby East Singba, where the sanctuary is located, and are awaiting a response. It was reported that the woman died from her injuries at a hospital that same day, and she was alleged that she was allegedly trampled. During her funeral, a herd of elephants allegedly stormed the village. One of the elephants arrived there suddenly and took the corpse from the funeral pyre, reported one Indian online newspaper, The Print. The elephant again trampled her dead body, threw it, and fled, wrote the publication. Odisha news channel Connect News posted a video to its verified Twitter account that appeared to show the image of the deceased woman as well as damage done to the village by the elephants. British tabloid publication The Daily Mail cited police officer Lopa Mundra Nayak as having confirmed the incident. Snopes is looking through the police department's uh, Facebook page and website but did not see an official statement. We also contacted the department by email and will update the article if we receive a response. Uh, just a side note by me, the, I've just taken this off their website so the response has not been given uh, as of recording this episode. Going back to the article, it says, We encountered conflicting reports about the precise details of the incident, such as the age of the deceased woman, reports claim she was 60, 68, or 70 years of age, as well as the date of the incident occurred. Some reports say June 11th, while others note that it's June 9th. We also came across social media users who claimed that the woman threw stones at the elephant while poachers took away the elephant's baby. We did not find a single legitimate news publication that reported this specific detail. Uh, a lot of people on social media, and this is me speaking now, a lot of people on social media uh, are talking about the fact that elephants are incredibly intelligent social animal animals and have um, demonstrated the ability to mourn and grieve for their loved ones, as well as hold grudges. You've heard that saying, like, an elephant doesn't forget. Um, a lot of people are sort of quoting that and saying that the woman must have done something to enrage this elephant, not only to kill her, but to uh, also return and attack her at her funeral. Um, these suggestions are also unfounded, and to be honest, they sound a lot like victim blaming, which we do not do on this show, um, unless they actually do something worth blaming, but this woman apparently did not. Uh, none of these news publications that we have read have reported the woman was either harassing the elephant or assisting poachers. While we have no reason to disbelieve that the events occurred at all, we are unable to determine whether the same elephant was involved and whether it was a targeted attack. In addition, there are further unanswered questions, such as where the funeral took place and did it occur in a location where the herd is known to migrate. The funeral stampede may have simply been a coincidental rather than an intentional attack. Uh, I would say to that that is, it would be a massively coincidence thing. Most people never in uh, interact with an elephant at all, let alone be killed by one and then desecrated um, you know, by it at the funeral, but very unlucky woman, um, that was, so, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to that person, as well as to the elephants, I'm hoping that they're okay and that they don't get, um, hunted by poachers or killed, uh, in retaliation for this attack. Uh, moving on for our next story, visitor trespasses orangutan enclosure at Indonesian Zoo, animal attacks by grabbing his leg. This is the first time we've talked about an orangutan on this show before. We've talked about monkeys and chimps and gorillas, but we have never talked about an orangutan and I'm excited. A little known fact, or uh, sorry, I'm just adjusting because my knee hurts. A little known fact, or I guess a bit of trivia for you, orangutans are actually the largest tree dwelling animals in the world. Um, they can weigh as much as a human can uh, and they are incredibly powerful. So trespassing in 
in an enclosure is an incredibly bad idea. Here is the story. While orangutans are known to be one of the most gentle apes, a shocking video of an animal attacking a man has gone viral on social media. In the video, the ape can be seen grabbing a man by his t-shirt at first. As a friend tries to pull the man away from the orangutan's tight grip, the animal grabs the man by his leg. A tug of war ensues as the orangutan tightens its grip and pulls him towards the enclosure. The man is seen hanging by his side at the enclosure, crying in fear before the video cuts off abruptly, leaving many to wonder how the incident ended. The unusual video has now amassed over 12 million views on Twitter. According to an Indonesian news website, the visitor violated the zoo's safety rules by climbing over a barrier that normally separates the animals from the visitors in order to get a video. The zoo's manager told reporters the orangutan may have been kicked by the visitor before the viral video was filmed. Okay, so side note, you know how I just said we don't victim blame on this show unless they kind of deserve it? This is one of those uh, instances where I think victim blaming is a little bit allowed, especially since apparently the guy survived. A local government organization in, social media, in a social media post said the young man trespassed the animal enclosure wrongfully in the afternoon to create content, deliberately taking advantage of the fact that the zoo's officers were on their break at the time. The management found that, uh, this is a quote, the management found out after the news went viral on social media, the post read. The team dispatched to the zoo and said they checked the orangutan cage following the incident. The cage has met the requirements where there is a barrier with a safe enough distance for visitors and a warning board that is given not to feed the animals or pass through the guardrail, the post said. The authorities have also requested the zoo's management to improve supervision of visitors and always remind visitors not to feed animals and to ensure safety limits in the form of warning boards and loudspeakers. The authorities also requested the zoo's management to improve supervision of visitors and always remind visitors not to feed the animals or periodically cross safety limits in the form of warning boards and loudspeakers. Did I just read that twice? I'm an idiot. Sorry, I've somehow posted that twice in my script. Oh well. Following... <laughs> this is a really great show, isn't it? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you're really uh, glad to be 25 minutes into the episode still, huh? Following the uproar online, the zoo issued an apology on Instagram and shared videos to show how the man broke the law and put his life in danger by crossing over the guardrails. They also requested visitors to be mindful of their actions and to have an enjoyable experience for all. Okay, so yeah, um, let's talk about who's to blame. It is 98% the man's fault for trespassing. Uh, shouldn't have done that, obviously, so he's a dickhead and he's our douchebag of the day. Uh, it does seem to me like the zoo's only fault is just to not... Like, why would you have all your workers take the break at the same time? That seems a little bit short-sighted. But apart from that, yeah. Okay. Look, moving along straight away to our final story in our Scratch the Day segment. Eight Andra farmers injured in bear attack. Efforts on to capture animal. I believe this is an Indian story, so forgive me if there are some bad pronunciations. I'll try to avoid them where I can. Eight farmers were injured when a bear attacked them in the Andhra Pradesh Sink I can't read Sikarum district on Monday, June 20th. The incident occurred in a town of the district. I'm just getting rid of some uh I'll I'll link to this news story if you want to read the, the place names, but I can't. I'm too tired. It's like 5 a.m. here. The condition of six of the injured is stated to be critical. The bear attacked farmers working in cashew and coconut plantations between two villages. Ten cattle were also injured in the bear attack. Eyewitnesses said that the bear attacked the farmers and cattle, causing people to panic. Six of the injured persons were shifted to the uh, Institute of Medical Science. The incident created a scare among people in the area. People and forest officials rushed to the village. They spoke to the local residents and gathered details of the incident. The forest officials have begun efforts to trace and catch the bear. Animal husbandry and fisheries minister reportedly spoke to officials and directed them to ensure the best possible treatment for the injured. He also asked forest officials to take immediate steps to catch the bear. Meanwhile, efforts are also on to capture a tiger which strayed into human habitation in a district a few days back. The tiger's movement has sparked fear among the residents of some villages and other, manda uh, and other mandals. I don't know what that means. 
The adult male tiger has been wandering in villages near the forest ever since May 23rd. It has killed a few livestock, including several buffaloes. While officials who inspected the pug marks in initially suspected it to be a leopard, CCTV cameras installed subsequently confirmed the presence of a tiger. More than 120 forest personnel have been deployed to capture the animal. Earlier, district forest officers said that if the tiger continues to roam around the forest and villages, it will be captured and returned to the forest. The New Indian Express reported that a special team from a town is set to visit the area to capture the tiger. Uh, wow, okay. I um, Yeah, a tiger and a bear story all in one. Oh my. Um, interesting, yeah. Jesus Christ, a bear to attack eight people and kill ten and injure ten uh, cattle. That bear must have been on a rampage. So, uh, like, usually I'm against the idea of capturing animals after this sort of thing happens, but in this case, I think that that bear may need to be looked at uh, because to... Have that kind of aggression where you can attack uh, 18 individual human slash animals is uh, pretty pretty bone chilling, and I doubt that the people are willing to return to work with that running around. Uh, and same with the tiger. Unfortunately, the tiger is not a, that big a deal. It's killed a couple bits of livestock so far, no people, so it's not a man eater yet. But uh, you know, when these animals get acclimated to human areas and food runs short, and the buffaloes and the uh, you know livestock run short. Uh, people of the next step. So that tiger also, unfortunately, may need to be captured and relocated. Okay, that is our show. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Apologies for not uploading for a while, but I am back in Australia now. I'm feeling a lot better. I'm still jet lagged, but that'll hopefully be over soon. So yeah, the plan is to continue our weekly uploads. Um, so please like and subscribe. Follow on Facebook and Instagram and all the bullshit. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify or iTunes or Apple podcast or google podcast or wherever you're listening make sure you follow or subscribe so you don't miss a new episode also if you haven't already please give it a rating uh it takes a few moments for you but it, it helps me out astronomically i can't express how helpful that is so please if you haven't already give us a review it doesn't even have to be five stars if you don't love it be honest but you know don't be don't be too honest and if you're like, ah, can I decide if it's four, five, four, four stars, five stars? Just give it five stars then, you know? Don't think too hard about it. Um, yeah, go and do that now for me. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Patreon, still open. Don't have to do it, but if you want to, man eaters on Patreon. All the social media links and my email link are in the description. So if you have any stories like Tristan did with Tuto Tom that you want me to share, please send that through. Uh, what else? Oh, also, if you think there is a difference in audio, quality you can let me know that too i am actually recording in a new house uh, i don't have a studio yet um so i'm actually recording in my little walk-in uh closet i'm in the closet just like my parents always uh, assumed while i was doing drama in high school i'm i'm a little bit in the closet today so yeah thank you for joining me have a fantastic week guys do something that makes you happy this week all right that's that's what i want you to promise me i want you to go out there and just Take some time for yourself. It's, it's a busy time of year. If you're like me, you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed and snowed under. I want you to take some time for yourself and really, uh, you know, make yourself happy. We can't rely on other people to make us happy. We've got to do it ourselves sometimes. So make sure you do that. And of course, guys, as always, please stay safe out there because as we've learned, it's a jungle out there. <laughs>